Hello there, I finally picked up the last Series 26 Space CMF. I didn't actually pick this up in Smiths. I didn't mention it in the video, but they only had the aisle hangers where you've got like 12 of them on a hanger, which to be fair, that would be very nice if they had the full series on there. You could just pick that up and take that to the tilt, but they only had two or three left and I didn't end up scanning them because Morrison's near me had another complete box. It's unheard of for that store to have a second complete box so fast. These are going very, very fast. And I think it's because everyone's starting to cotton on that they have the QR codes on the bottom that you can scan to find the minifigures you want. So hopefully this is the final minifigure. I have them all scanned and they're actually labeled on the bottom which ones they should be. And if this falls now, that is going to be a lot of hard work down the drain. It's a shame that the camera is not picking up the top one, but I think that will have to do. I am afraid to move them any further in case they all fall. So welcome back to another CMF unboxing. Hopefully we've got full series here. Stay to the end of the video to take a look at the recent iteration of my new CMF base because it definitely can be improved. But speaking of bases, they are meant to have a brand new element. Now I'll try to record this video in a different style. I'll be opening them here because I now don't have to try and scan them all. That was very awkward last time. And then we'll take a closer look at all of them at the end, as well as the new CMF base. So this first one should be the Mtron figure. And it is indeed, this is the one that I was missing. But let's take a look at the new CMF base before we get to the minifigures. Because as you can see, it's nice and shiny. To go with the space theme, they've made it all starry, like a night, which fits very, very well with half of these minifigures, especially all the aliens. And I think it's definitely an improvement from the last one. And it's not actually the first time we've seen a different base. I know one of the series I have, I think it was the 15th CMF series or... At this point, it might have even been the 20th. It's probably the 20th had orange bases. And we've seen a few different colours throughout other CMFs. Like the Disney 100 had a nice Disney 100 logo on the front. So it's a very, very nice base. But as I said, the first minifigure is the Mtron. We will be ticking these off as we go, just in case we do need one. Though the QR is yet to fail us. And we can have a quick look at all the other minifigures, which hopefully you will be seeing in this video. But it's always nice to look at them together because... We've got such a wide range of these figures in this CMF series that there's, I guess, a common theme of space, but it doesn't really look like much else. Like I said, we've got old Lego themes returning. We've even got an astronaut thrown in there, which, looking at them, is probably the most normal of the bunch. Normal being like a normal Lego figure, something you'll find in Lego City, not necessarily a cmf but you do definitely get more regular figures in some of the recent cmfs looking behind me at my frame i can see a few like the goat herder that definitely fit in some of the medieval sets we've been getting recently so that other angle was really hard to show off all of the detail on these minifigures but as you can see the mtron figure does look like the classic lego version with a quite a few upgrades actually First off, we've got the side printing on the legs, which is very, very nice. And that does continue on both of the legs. It's not just on one side, it's on both. We've got a load of printed parts. We've got this, as far as I'm aware, new 1x2 tile, which acts as some sort of crate for this Mtron figure to be lifting. We've got the M on the chest, of course, for Mtron. We've got this speed dial, which I guess is meant to be either the battery of this machine or the power output, which is very, very nice. And I thought this was going to be a sticker on the back, but this yellow printing on the black 1x2 tile is just that. It's printing, which is very, very nice for a CMF. And then we have this new element, which is unlike anything I have ever seen. I'm not too familiar with the Mtron series. I know... They were something to do with magnets, but I really like this element. And if you did get two of these, you could definitely use this for some sort of minifigure mech modifier. Like give them two of these each side and they could probably be lifting anything. Speaking of this one by two does clip in on that middle stud. You can clip it either end, but it looks better on the middle stud if you want them to be holding it. But it also does work just on the side of that base. Now, we do get some spare pieces. We just get a red clip and this speed dial. Both very nice pieces, and I'm really enjoying getting spares of these red clips because 
they're so much better than the blue one now this next minifigure as you can see on the bottom is meant to be the flying saucer this one here so hopefully the qrs don't fail us and we do end up with a full series because i'm really looking forward to this series there is one minifigure in particular and as you can see we've got the flying saucer now the reason i like to open these on camera is because i can show off parts of the minifigure before they're actually built like this flying saucer piece i was really worried that this would try to be some dual molded piece with the helmet but because we already have this dome in existence lego have just used this and invented a whole new flying saucer piece now this is what the underside looks like because i'm sure not many people have shown you the underside of the saucer it's got some nice ridge detail and well it's a lot more detail than lego really needed to do but i am definitely not complaining and then we've got this nice smooth top that this dome piece just clips in you can see where the stud gap is is where the sticky up bits are in the ufo i don't know if that's the professional term sticky up bits and then you've got yourself a ufo so if you are creating any micro cities and would like a small alien invasion this is a great piece for it because you can definitely fit just a green stud or two inside and even some unique pieces will fit in there basically anything you can fit in the dome will fit in this ufo now the torso and legs it is a shame there's no leg printing on this minifigure that would honestly have just put it a bit further up but it's not really needed you've got all the stars on the front i'll try not to get as much glare throughout this video and there's also earth on the back which i do really like and in fact because i'm displaying it in my new smiths unit i will be turning around the torso and making sure that earth is visible from the front technically an illegal technique as you can see the torso stripe is on the front but that is only the front and the back for the machines trying to make it so i really do prefer it this way around careful you don't end up cracking your hands arms or torsos when you do it make sure you're holding the arm when you pop it off rather than holding the hand and then you've got the mask the jim carrey green head first off if you do know any alternate minifigures for any of these pieces definitely let me know in the comments because i will be making another cmf custom video i'm not sure how soon i have quite a few different minifigures prepared but if you'd like a shout out in that video definitely let me know in the comments now there is quite a glare on the dome piece on top but you can see the alien head is inside and i really like the space costume i guess this is no other accessories honestly not really any needed i think if they were to give an accessory for this minifigure it'd be cool to get a globe piece which then of course could be used in your lego city or wherever really you want there to be a globe maybe even a small solar system but something that i've just noticed on this tour so you see that white dot next to earth that's representing the moon that is incredible detail i just thought that was another star but that's actually the moon which is really cool as i said i do prefer the earth being on the front and the back there is a shooting star if you don't want the earth but i really do like the earth on the front when it is on display so for the next minifigure <laughs> oh dear well you just knew that was going to happen at some point for the next minifigure we're meant to be getting the beetle which i find it quite weird that there's only eight out of the 12 on the front of this of course if there were 16 of them perhaps only choosing half would make sense but to fit another four you could definitely make this a bit smaller could you even whack this on the back i'm not sure the legality of showing off there's only one minifigure perhaps we could have included it on the top or even just get rid of these they're in boxes the only place i see these on the hooks is the leicester square london store because most other smaller stores like stratford actually have these still in the boxes and also in my local smiths so perhaps they could start out doing these and just give the boxes and then include the other four minifigures i think i'd rather see all 12 on the front of the box than have this cut out here and then maybe we could even display the front with the cmf minifigures but the beetle is the admiral trench looking minifigure and once again stick around like the video if you do enjoy and subscribe so you see which customs i can make using this cmf series because there are some really good pieces I like these demogorgon legs i don't know if they're used for the demogorgon or a werewolf first but i call them demogorgon legs because they're the legs that caught my attention with this new weird looking knee joint well 
It's weird for a minifigure. It actually quite works for this CMF. And we get some beetle wings. It definitely looked more like some sort of spider. But you can tell with it in hand that it's meant to be a beetle. But that head is definitely a good piece for a trench custom. We just need to get some triple arms. Like the double arms we've seen for Rio Durant, we've seen for Stitch. We need some triple arms for Admiral Trench. He's also got some kind of snack. Do beetles eat purple bubbly leaves? I think this one does at least. And of course, as you can see, that same base, it looks really cool. I really like the printing on this minifigure. I like that the skull is a translucent piece with some matte or somewhat shiny printing on it because it reminds me a lot of the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, Indiana Jones movie. I know it's hit and miss for some fans, but I did quite like that movie. Not enough to call it my favourite, but it was a decent movie nonetheless. And it reminds me of the skulls from that. I weren't old enough to collect any of the Lego sets, but if they did have any of the skulls, I assume this is a very similar piece used for this beetle. Again, no arm printing, leg printing, but you do have printing not only on the head, but also on the wings to match the printing on the back. So again, another really nice minifigure. And now we don't have a tower to the right. There shouldn't be any boxes flying. This box is meant to be the heroine, which is this minifigure, I believe. Well, let's take a look and open up to see if I am correct. And it does look like it is. So before we take a look at the minifigure, my favorite piece from this minifigure is this great bulldog in fact in my lego city i do have a normal i think they're french bulldogs i don't know if that's the official lego term or if that's just the breed they're modeled after but i do have a regular one and i don't know if you can see on camera but this bulldog has actually got completely different printing first off we've got eyebrows which i'll probably include a closer image of the two up on screen to the left so let's stick to the right We've got eyebrows on this mechanical bulldog. We've also then got these pink eyes, which do look really cool. We've then got a very glossy nose. I'm not quite sure if there is some silver printing on the nose or if the nose just hasn't been fully printed. Hopefully that isn't a misprint. And then we've got a thinner mouth with two bolts either side rather than the three freckles on the dog. So that is completely different printing. The same mold in a nice shiny chrome silvery color and i really do like this dog but of course the dog isn't the heroine in this story well perhaps he is in yours because to each their own but the heroine is modeled after one of the old cmfs the martian cmf which actually we've got three of you might not remember but the looney tunes did come with the martian from looney tunes so we do technically have three martian cmf minifigures some nice side of the leg printing, as you can see with the stripes there, which is actually mirrored on the elbow and on the knees at the front of the trousers. Some really nice atom symbols on the top of the arms and nice printing overall. And I like the ginger ponytail coming out of the helmet there. It definitely restricts what this helmet could be used for in terms of minifigures, but from the front, you're not gonna be able to tell. We've got a dual-sided head again, We've got more of a grin on one side and a smirk on the other. So let's flip the head around to the alternate expression. And of course, you can fit both minifigure and bulldog on the plate. The only thing with the dog is you can't grip the studs. So there's not much clutch power. If I were to flip the minifigure over, the dog is falling off. But I'm going to display this in my unit. So it's not a problem for me. One solution to that is to grab a one by two play and attach the dog to that i've done it with a few of my other animals and then the dog will stay on no matter what in fact i just realized we are missing a piece i'm not quite sure ah it is here we're not missing a piece i just forgot to put it on we do have some of these new lego skirt pieces which i've noticed are included in a lot of the new harry potter sets in that black color but we've got it in this lavender color this light purple which does match with the lower legs and arms. And actually, there's some really nice matching of colors here. You've got the top and the trousers and the skirt all matching. And then the gloves actually match the color of the helmet. So I really like the way they've matched up that figure. And the eyes of the dog also match the torso color. But onto the next minifigure, the astronaut. This is the most regular of the bunch, I guess. We've got a few classic minifigures that Lego have revisited. and 
they're always looking to improve the astronaut. This seems like a lot of pieces compared to the last few figures. And in fact, there is a massive piece for the backpack. I wonder if we're going to see this in a few space sets. I know the space theme has gone a bit away from regular city. You can't really see it with the exposure because it's a white piece, which to be fair, it's either the white pieces or the black pieces that I have the problems with. But you can see it's a two plate tall, two by three with these pieces. I mean, let's see if we can rebuild it. So I do give Lego a lot of shtick for creating new pieces rather than giving us the brick built versions. But I know you're not able to see it too well on camera. Let me see if I can adjust the exposure. But as you can see, the brick built version does not look as sleek as this one. I mean, it's mainly the top pieces. So perhaps Lego could have come out with some new elements instead, but there's no way you're fitting a helmet on this brick built version because the Lego mold actually goes in a bit at the top. So it is quite a nice piece the Lego have given us. And of course, we've got a bunch of accessories for this. Now, for some of the more complicated builds, the instructions are actually in this leaflet, which is just the back of the checklist. So I think we will be following this. We do have a tile which goes on the back. Interesting that Lego haven't just printed this onto the backpack but I guess as they didn't really need to I still think the top bit could have been its own mold and a few more pieces but then would we have got this many pieces in a CMF probably not there are some nice pieces like the mech fingers here and the frying pan like studs and this minifigure definitely definitely reminds me of the astronaut from Doctor Who if you know you know sort of thing but it seems that it's somewhat based after the giant creator three in one that we've got recently the giant backpack for the astronaut is definitely a dead giveaway it's just a shame it doesn't come with another of the space dogs i definitely have preferred getting a space dog with this astronaut than the giant backpack though that's not to say i don't like the giant backpack i definitely enjoy this helmet that we're seeing quite a bit around space we've got it on the mtron figures and I don't think it's exactly a new mold. I think it's just one of the older ones that Lego have brought back, updated a little bit, and it's just done really, really well. We also get this camera over the left shoulder of the astronaut. Again, the exposure is not great for this white minifigure. You can see the red stripe on the arm print in there, some few closer details, and a nice stripe on the leg. We've got the one by the two by three, sorry, printed panel on the back. Very, very nice tile there. And there's quite a bit of detail actually on the torso of the astronaut. You can see the camera a bit better there. And we've got two control panels. They look like joysticks for the astronaut to control the path of their flight. It's very, very nice. I didn't check to see if we got a dual helmet. We don't have a dual sided face. We do have a dual molded helmet though, by the way. I guess that's so the astronaut can take off the helmet if they want. A bit of fresh air which i wouldn't recommend doing in space now we are halfway through and this next minifigure is meant to be the alien you can see just written down there and that was found out using the qr code so if we open it up you can see that it is indeed the alien which does look like paul or it even looks like the recent fortnite skin that green one that they've now given a bunch of different colors for but it comes with a backpack, a very, very nice shirt, which has its uses. I can see people's complaints with the dual molded printed arms, but I really like the fact that they've printed that sleeve right up to the line. There is some precision on it and it actually goes a lot further up than I've seen on any of these other arms. Actually, it is very, very close to the torso. So I'll again include some closer images on the left hand side of your screen because my camera is struggling a bit at this range but we also get a very very nice hat it looks like a trilby or some sort of hat i don't really know i'm not a hat specialist but i also don't know how to put it on clearly there we go and it also comes with a camera this is the alien tourist it's a great minifigure i mean look at it it just looks great doesn't it i really really like this I think we are forgetting about something. There seems to be a clear piece. I guess that's the lens of the camera. Yeah, that makes sense. It's 
sort of annoying that it's got that Lego logo in the middle, so you can have it on or off. Perhaps that's the cap for the camera, sir. So let's have this alien removing the cap, perhaps taking a photo of all the other CMFs, and we'll just clip it to his hand like that, because I definitely prefer the camera as well. Just the camera piece, I guess. It's a piece that we've seen quite a bit in Lego. I think even Yoda has one on one of the Lego books, but this is a very, very fun CMF. Now we are past the halfway line. I'm not even going to bother checking which minifigure this is, but I can tell you by looking at all the little aliens around that this is the imposter. Now, the reason this minifigure is the imposter is because if you take a look at the minifigure, it might seem normal at first. I mean, maybe slightly weird teeth, but you can see that looks like a bog standard minifigure. Well, if you were to flip the head around and use one of these antenna pieces, which we did see in Smiths in one of the minion sets, they've actually already been recolored and put in some of the minion sets. There's actually a tiny alien controlling this minifigure. And it's not the only one in this build because we actually have another three to stand around i'm not sure if we're meant to have three sometimes they give us an extra so it doesn't say in the manual in fact it probably has an image on the other side and as i thought as you can see we're meant to be getting two with this minifigure but as we get a spare one there is a third one included and who am i to separate the four of them i'm not taking one away so i will have all four of these on display with the giant minifigure machine is this the smallest mech we've got in lego I know the magazines have given Batman and a few other ones little mechs, but I think this is actually the smallest mech we've got in Lego form. So that is awesome. I'm going to start lining them behind because I think I started this row a bit too soon. And you also get a spare little radio tower, little antenna for the minifigure's head. So if any of your other minifigure heads, especially in the Friends line, have that hole in the middle of the hair, let me show you what I mean. So most hair pieces do have some hole for hair accessories and this just clips straight into that and it's a nice and sturdy clip actually so if any of your other minifigures have this hole in the hair you can definitely add this to them for now i think i'm going to put the piece in the endor layer and it does look funny but if you want some robots in your city it's definitely a cool spare piece to get and the next minifigure we will be opening is all over the place. So I think this is the Butler minifigure, which is funny it's called that because it looks like the, well, it looks like a few droids. I can't remember the first one I was thinking of, but it also looks like the droid, especially the leg pieces from the Fantastic Four comics, I think it is, but it is indeed whipping up something nice to eat. We've got another Mysterio dome which I don't actually own a Mysterio minifigure, so this can definitely be used for a custom Mysterio. If I end up picking another one, these legs, these legs are something special. You can see they're two by two on the bottom, which does offset the minifigure a little bit. And then it looks like it's included a two by two brick on the top. You can definitely brick build it if you want to, but it's a very nice mold that I don't think we'll really be seeing again. As I said, it does offset. You could include a jumper tile if you do want them to be front and centre. But personally, I'm not too fussed about it. And you can add the swirl into the saucepan so that this butler is whisking up something special for perhaps themselves. Perhaps they're cooking for someone. But either way, it definitely looks quite nice. Now, there is some arm printing and other details that I haven't mentioned you can see there's some gears on the elbow. It does look very, very nice, actually. And there's also a cassette tape on the back and a little dish of some sort. It looks like, you know where you store the batteries? It looks like that sort of part on the back. You've definitely got some weird eyes. It looks like either the Smiler from Alton Towers or the Billy Puppet to some extent. So if you want to make a half-decent mock of either of them, definitely pick up this minifigure. And we're down to our last four, our final third, and the next minifigure is another one off the front, this space penguin, because I think the penguin does come with a minifigure, but the penguin's definitely the main grab. Speaking of, let's take a look at that penguin first. You can see it's some sort of robotic penguin. I don't really know the reasoning behind this. I know this is some IC minifigure that they've brought back, and 
actually it does come with a pretty cool helmet this helmet can't be too far off the clone assassin from star wars bad batch series if we do end up getting a set with them i wouldn't mind this colored in black it might not be the most accurate thing but i think it would hold up pretty well for a clone assassin and we also have the same sort of chess piece as we've seen with paz vizsla and we've seen with Rekka, and we've seen it quite a few times now in star wars there is some earth logo on the side again i've not been a collector of lego for that long to know what these pieces are and we also have some kind of drill i assume this is going to be in the instructions and it is our final minifigure in the instructions so i have built this a little wrong but we do have some sort of electric chainsaw which does look pretty cool and this just clips onto the minifigure's hands the best thing about this cmf is that they come with a spare hairpiece and that is so if you don't want to display them with their helmet on you can display them with this really cool hairpiece. We've seen it a few times like with the carrot mascot for the farmer's market. And then you can always display the helmet on the penguin. That looks so cute on the penguin because it's the same-ish headpiece. It's the same printing that the penguin's got. So I'm definitely going to display the penguin with the helmet. And as you can see, it's a really cool minifigure that they've revisited. But it's still not my favourite from this series. We're slowly breaking it down. And the next minifigure is going to be... Oh, actually, this is a really cool one. And this might not be my favourite, but it is a close contender. Because what you'll see is not only translucent body parts, but actually it's that glittery purple. I'm not sure if it's printed. I will have to check the underside of the arm to find out for sure. And is it an illegal piece? Now, Lego do tend to stick to two translucent parts together are an illegal piece. But if you are a fan of any sort of mocks, you'll probably have seen that a load of the plates get stacked on top of each other. And not many people stick to that role, including Lego. Now, in this case, we have a translucent head and a translucent hairpiece. I believe the hairpiece might be a different kind of plastic but even in some of the recent sets bars and cones which are a big no-no for translucent pieces have been included together so lego are definitely relaxing on that rule but that might be due to some improvements in the molding process now you won't be able to see it but there is some glittery purple on the underside of the arm so that is a mold of the glittery purple variant in fact we do have some bricks that have recently been on the pick a brick wall that are the same they have been molded in that glittery purple you can see it runs down the bottom and on the inside and it's a really nice starry look for the orion minifigure it does also mean that no two minifigures much like the bricks you can see no two minifigures will be the same because each minifigure will have glitter in slightly different proportions and different places so it does mean that you could probably collect a few of these and custom make some different star signs for the other minifigures now as you can see for the most part every other piece is translucent and you've got the legs then you've got the non-translucent hip piece i guess the torso isn't either but that's to connect the arms and the head which are all the hands aren't they're purple the hair piece is and i think this could be a Lego Force Ghost, not this minifigure in particular, but translucent legs, arms, just give us a light blue torso and legs, similar to the bluish grey Moaning Myrtle from Harry Potter, which was a really nice minifigure. And I think they've even done it in black and white because I think most of the ghosts are actually done in black and white. But we want a light blue Force Ghost with some blue trans pieces. Perhaps the blue just isn't necessary. And of course, last year would have been the year to do it. So. I don't see us getting any of them pieces for perhaps another five years because then the anniversary of Return of the Jedi would swing back around. And unless we get like a Force Ghost Qui-Gon from the Clone Wars before then, I think that would be great to include in another Endor village. So hopefully we do get that. We get the nice Orion printing on the shield. Have I got that the right way around? I don't think I do. So let me flip that round. I'm not too knowledgeable about star signs, but I like the way that the shield can just rest by the side. And there's also the giant club, which I guess is related to the star sign. It's a great minifigure. And again, hopefully this is one step closer to Force Ghosts. Now, the penultimate minifigure 
is between the space baby and the green half mutated minifigure so the first one we are opening is going to be the mutated minifigure this is really really cool because once again we see another dual arm you can actually see unlike the normal hands that are normally pointing into the torso one of these is pointing out and one of them's pointing up i don't know if that's been mixed in the box or if that's how they come so let me know how your hands actually one's pointing down and one's pointing out so i don't really know why that is but again that might not be a pattern for everyone it also comes with this breathing apparatus which i'm assuming has broken by the look on this minifigure's face it doesn't look like it's worked too well and what would have been cool for this minifigure is like the venom minifigures to have a half and half face at the front and then to have a fully green face at the back but because of the slim hair piece and again this might be in reference to a character from lego lore it means that they've not been able to print anything on the back now we do have another breathing apparatus and actually another hair piece this is really cool because this is definitely going towards a clone trooper so thank you lego for that and we also have two pistols now i don't think these pistols are spare because we do have the two hands on the right and because the arm has mutated obviously it means the weapons mutated too so double the arms double the weapons once again we see the demogorgon the demidog or the wolf leg on the right which is really nice we got this in the last cmf2 with the harpy so it's really nice to be getting these in a bunch of different colors it may have been nice to have gotten for both sides because now we've only got one double green arm but that's something lego can tackle later on and i'm sure with all the aliens we get we'll probably end up getting these legs in the city sets sometime soon but it's a really cool minifigure to get and now we're on to the last one which is indeed if you haven't guessed my personal favorite and it's not just because of the pink baby which i've seen a lot of love for in the lego community so let's put that together i've made you wait long enough look at that that is a great lego space baby i will be putting these in my smith's frame at the end of the video so stick around for that because i can then show off the blue space baby as well but this robot here which first off translucent arms with printing we didn't see that with orion this might be a first but it's just really really cool otherwise but this also reminds me of the Coruscant medical bots that we see pop up a few times in Clone Wars. I'll agree they are a bit sketchy of a robot to include in a kids show but it is really cool to get something that looks close to them in minifigure form. I think they were mostly pink but I'm sure different colours and styles were available. So if you did want to army build any of this CMF the astronaut is a good pick again star signs and you can just customize hair pieces for the most part i'd also say the imposter is a great minifigure for army building because of all the little aliens that come with it i mean you get three little aliens and that headpiece can go on any of these other minifigures and i think this is the next one in line so it's between the astronaut the star sign the imposter or this if you are a star wars fan there are some really nice pieces of course You'll then end up with an army of pink space babies as well. And overall, I really like the CMF wave. And as you can see before you, this is the full series. Series 26, the space CMF series as it's been dubbed. And I hope the video was watchable enough. Now that we've hit 1,000 subscribers, be sure you watch all of the ads so I can eventually save up for a better camera. Thank you so much for all the support on the channel. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. And I think... My favourite is definitely between that bot, although the one next to it is really cool too. I really like this alien tourist and I'm a big fan of the new UFO piece. You will be seeing an Admiral Trench mock coming very, very soon. And perhaps I can do some sort of Coruscant mock with the new space medical droid. But there's some really, really good pieces in this. I really like all the unique parts. And if you were thinking whether or not to buy these, definitely pick them up. Now, I will say... With the QR codes, don't go spending a lot online to order these because you can walk into a store and it does take a little bit, but the app is so fast at scanning them. I haven't had any problems with this series. Some people have, so be sure to update your app before you go hunting. And it's just a much cheaper way to get the full series. And now, as you can see, all of my CMFs are in place in 
the unit. Hopefully, my camera can focus without the light. If I turn on any sort of external light, it's just going to glare off of these minifigures. But as you can see, they don't really look more at home anywhere else other than next to the other series. And once again, I do apologize for the focus on the camera. It does struggle with any sort of lighting. I have tried it with a bunch of different things. I just need to get basically a new one at some point. But I really like the look of these CMFs. Perhaps if I can turn it on, it will stop going out of focus. There we go, something to focus on. You can see that the pink Space Baby is indeed above the blue Space Baby, which looks really cool. And overall, I'm just very happy with this whole display. So we've got the full Series 26, and then across to the left, the full Series 25. 23 below it, because to the right is 24. And almost a full Series of 22. I believe that's correct. And then we have 21, we have 20, which should have the orange plates. I'll need to fix that. And then we have 19, 18, is that how this works? And then a few of the older series down at the bottom. So one day, I hope to have at least all of these series complete because these are the series that I grew up with. Perhaps not some of the older ones because, well, that's just a lot of money to be spending on minifigures now. But coming from a Star Wars fan, actually, it's probably not as bad as you think. And as promised, we will be taking a look at my new and improved CMF base. You may remember a few times before on this channel I have tried to brick build my own and then started 3d printing one but I have made an upgrade to that and personally I think it looks really really cool now before we get carried away with what this frame can do let me show you why it's different to the last one I made because I actually reprinted my last design these are printed using the scales for official lego bricks so I won't be able to mass produce these and ship these out, sell them on my own because they are still Lego bricks at the end of the day. But I added studs to the bottom. Initially, I added four studs, but I decided because you'd never get anything attached to the studs in the corner to just remove them and leave the two studs in the middle, which gives off a much cleaner look. You can see that the minifigures do fit very comfortably. You could fit a few different helmets on that. In fact, I have added the Kamen Owen and Tarn way into it. It's the tallest minifigure I own, even taller than the Wookiee. So you definitely fit some really big minifigures in and their accessories. And that is not all. For Star Wars fans out there, you can even display your Astromex, which I really, really do like. All I've done is put a jumper tile on there. And because of how thick the legs are, you can't display them in, but you can lean them forward. You could probably even lean them back, which might look a bit cleaner because you don't see droids going around like this now, do you? So if I were to lean the legs back and put it in from the back of the frame, trying to look for the stud without seeing is not the easiest, but that might look a bit better because the legs are just plain at the end of the day and that is how the droid would go across the floor. Now, that's not the only cool thing about these. You can see there are studs on top and that is the whole reason why I made these because they do stack and I am so impressed with how they stack. I'm first off impressed because I printed these with nowhere near the same level of accuracy as Legos and they do in fact stack, but then you can put them next to each other. I've included the original CMF as the base. Of course, you could use a base plate or any other plates you want. That's just to give them a bit of stability when they're up. And of course, if you've got a droid hanging out the back, it might tend to flop over. So I do think this is the future of CMF bases, or at least I would really love it to be, because simply they just take up less space and you build your own frame with them. You could even indent them a little bit, build a pyramid of minifigures. And you may know that I do have a hexagonal wall display for clones. This would basically be like Lego making their own one. You could include a bracket on the top one, add either the Technic or Lego plate with the hook that you can hang on your wall. And this is just gonna be so much easier. Of course, it's a bit bigger. It goes against Lego's typical display. So I wouldn't bet on seeing a change to it anytime soon, especially with all the new prints they're giving that base. But if I were to create my own CMF display, it would look like this. So before I round out the video, it's a little later into the day now. And you can see on the bottom row of this display, I've actually moved my other complete minifigure or collectible minifigure series even. They are definitely far from complete, except for the Looney Tunes one, which does look really cool. I've tried to 
pair them up best I can and well most of them do have their own pairs. I cannot find President Business, the golfing uniform from the Lego Movie Series 2 CMF, but besides that I'm pretty sure I've got all of my collectible minifigures and what this has done is freed up a whole row of the unit underneath it and as you can see it's a lot lot nicer to look at. We have my Space Series on the top left not including the pink and blue babies that you see on the CMS later, but I have taken the purple space tour. So perhaps I need to buy another one for my CMF because if you scroll back through the video, it's just got a plain purple torso at the minute. We've also then got my SpongeBob minifigures. I really hope they revisit this at some point because I'd love to get a crusty crab. I've seen so many idea sets for it. I think we need an updated one with a full proper interior. That would look really cool. And then I've got all my DC minifigures that aren't hanging out in the superhero calf in my Lego city. And then I've actually risen all of my Marvel figures on the right here to match the left ones. I think this is one of my favorite displays. It's up there with the Star Wars one. I think Star Wars takes the cake for the better minifigures. You can argue that in the comments below, but I really do like this display. So if I were to take a few steps back, you can see that all my Marvel minifigures and all my CMF minifigures do look blurry at the minute, but they do look very, very nice on the wall behind me. And I think there's definitely some more Marvel minifigures I want, so I might have to start expanding onto the top row because the only gap I have is actually at the back right corner, just behind the Chitari there. I guess I could probably squeeze some minifigures in here where the animals are, but the reason the animals are there is because there was only one stud gap. So let me know what you think about both of my minifigure displays down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video and may the bricks be with you always.